So if you guys, if you need a ride in a semi truck, wait, Isla, wait, wait, wait. If they need a ride to Loretta's, Minio's, Nationals, Prom, call you or, or yeah. message you, and like then you guy. show up with the bikes and the tools and everything. Yeah. If you got a kid going to a national race, reach out to Isla and they will get your bike and tools here for you. Mason. Yeah. Goodbye, son. Goodbye. No parties. Uh, no pedos. Yeah. No uh, gang members. Come on. You can still have fun, though. You can uh, clean the floor, put the dishes away, wash the windows. If you run out of chores to do, call me. I'll let you know. Love you. Oh yeah. And feed the cats too. Also, turn the lights off. Bye. All right. So. I'll give you three driving tips. Could give you more, obviously, but I don't want you to, I'm gonna let this person go ahead. I'm nice like that, that's not one of my tips, that's just a bonus. Watch for people that are coming in front of you. Anyways, okay, so three tips. The first one, the most important thing, is you always use your right foot for both the gas and the brake. Always the right foot, did they teach you that? In the no. Test? No? Uh, you always use your right foot because you want to have muscle memory where you only use your right foot because if you're ever in a situation where you have to brake really fast, then your gut reaction is going to be both feet, left and right, in which case you're going to hit gas and brake potentially and then the gas will win and you'll run into whatever. So you always not use, me. not you, because you're always going to use Use your right foot for both gas and brake. If you're in a parking lot, if you're in a, pulling into a gas station, anywhere where you might potentially have someone run out in front of you or pull in front of you, back up in front of you, like a Kawasaki rider, they're really bad about that. Especially the white ones. Yeah, you wanna be careful with the white Kawasaki riders. Always keep your, your right foot over the brake as you're pulling through a parking lot and potentially there could be a shopping cart or someone backing up. Okay? Okay. That's tip number one. That took forever. Speed things up on tip number two. Tip number two is when you are turning, turning a steering wheel is like throwing a fatty, all right? You really only have to do the work to turn the wheel and then it'll straighten itself out. As long as the wheels are spinning, it'll kind of straighten itself out. Watch, I'll demonstrate here in a second. This isn't even a sharp turn, so I guess it won't even work. But once the turn is completed, that was a horrible demonstration because it was, uh, wasn't was a very sharp turn. But the wheel will usually straighten itself out. Okay, that's tip number two. Tip number three, as we're driving along the highway, you wanna look as far ahead as possible. Whatever the furthest thing ahead of you is, whether it's the horizon or the suburban in front of us, that's where you wanna look. If you look directly in front of you, 20 feet in front of you, then you're gonna be constantly overcorrecting and you'll be a lot smoother if you're looking further ahead. Like in life. If you have a goal, if you have something you're working towards, something off in the distance, you'll usually stay on course to where you want to go. That's the reason why I haven't really accomplished anything in life myself, because I'm all over the road. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so those are the three tips. We'll start with that, okay? What's tip number one again? All right. As long as you listen to everything I say... I'll survive. And you follow my instructions exactly, then we'll be fine, okay? Uh. Okay, so you're gonna put it in reverse because I do not want you going through that door right there. So put it, put your foot on the brake. Well, I wanna go forward. No. <laughs> I'm not gonna get that. I don't want you to go through the Eagle's Landing. Okay, put it in reverse. Okay, wait until this car moves. You don't need any gas, just back up straight. Just back up straight, back up straight, back up straight, back up straight. Okay, now turn your wheel to the right, hit the brake. I'm hit, the best. Hit the brake, hit the brake. I am. Now Maybe. go, yeah, in the drive. Oops. <laughs> get out the way, dude. I'm gonna hit you. Okay, we're gonna get on the 15 southbound right here. Go ahead and start, go ahead and start slowing down. <laughs> All right, and you want to get up to about 70 once you're uh, 
entering the freeway, okay? Might not be the smoothest driver ever, but. All right, so as you can see, uh, Luke has his learner's permit. Congratulations to Luke. He uh, got 82? 84. 84. They're coming! Out of how many? <laughs> 84 out of 100. 84%. 84% out of 100. I got eight questions. So we are driving down to St. George. Uh, Lillian is already down there. We're gonna ride at Mesquite tomorrow. Luke is gonna be doing the driving until it gets dark and then I'll pull over. Yeah, go, go the speed limit, please. Mason stayed at home. Go ahead and start, like, yeah, start planning ahead before you get up to the uh, semi truck. Mason can't can't ride because he's got an injured collarbone, so he is staying at home. I'm like, what do I do? Like, he can't ride. Do I make him do a 10 hour drive there and back to Mesquite just to do nothing and not participate and have any fun? Oh, there's three lanes. This is the passing lane though, so you don't need to be in this lane. Full pass. You're not passing it. You're passing no one. Get in the. Get over. So I let Mason stay home, and he is uh, just gonna be taking it easy. Get in front of this guy. Don't judge me. You can judge me. If you judge me, just don't call CPS on me. But he should be fine. We'll be back. We'll be back in like two days. I broke. I broke my finger, my pinky, which is not a good finger to to break. Cause I actually use my pinky when I'm doing things like holding my phone. I I learned that I use my pinky to kind of like stabilize or or rest my phone or my camera on my pinky, which I can't do anymore. I broke it doing a bike review. So that video will probably come out at some point, but uh, it was just, it was bent sideways. So I pulled it, straightened it out, taped it up. It was fine. Go ahead and get off the gas. Cause These guys are totally blocking me. I know, so anticipate that and start slowing down ahead of time. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, anyway, so basically I just, I taped my pinky up to my ring finger and called it good and that was like three or four weeks ago. Um, it's still really swollen and I can't, I can't straighten it all the way. Like this one is straight, this one isn't all the way straight. But I was like, okay, it's fine, whatever. The kid's mom bought me this the splint which was nice of her. She knew that I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay for it myself. I used it for like a day and then I was like, nah, not really feeling it. Until today. Today, this guy goes to shake my hand and I was like, all right, it's been three or four weeks. I'm sure my, fing my finger can handle it. Well, this guy goes to shake my hand, but he gives it a good squeeze. But instead of squeezing the hand part, he just, just squeezed my fingers and it, freaking hurt it, it basically it hurt as bad as it is when I first broke it and then I was like after that I was like yeah I'm gonna wear this splint because that way if someone tries to shake my hand I could be like broken finger sorry without offending them but anyways uh, here we go we got we got Luke driving am I going like way under the speed limit why is the semi gapping he's going slow I catch up to him he takes off he's all the way going you guys shocked? Are you surprised? We uh, made it here to St. George safely last night. Luke did a, a great job driving. Hit the rumble strip a few times, but stayed on the road. No accidents. He didn't take anyone out. Didn't cause any pileups. Didn't T-bone any, any motorcycles. So that was great. Um, if we ever do, if we ever did get an accident, I know what to do. The first thing that I'm doing is I'm going to the description of this video. I'm clicking on the link and filling out an application with the advocate so that way can get a free consultation and they can go to bat for me, defend me against my own insurance company because these guys know how to get you the settlement that you deserve if you're ever injured in an accident. In fact, they don't take anything. They don't take any payment up front. They don't take any payments at all until you win your case. They're all over the country, Washington, Idaho, Nebraska, Arizona, California, Utah. We are really grateful for the advocates for sponsoring this video. If you guys are ever in need of their service, Services because you're in an accident because someone other than Luke probably took you out on the highway or in an intersection then be sure they are the first person that you reach out to to talk about your case um, funny story so last night I let Luke drive until it started getting too dark and then we pulled over and then I drove ironically I got pulled over but it was just because I had a headlight out but the good thing is is I was the one behind the wheel because I had experience uh, talking to cops <laughs> smoozing my way out of a ticket which I don't know if he would have done the same for Luke or not, but luckily he didn't give me a ticket, but now I gotta get my headlight fixed.
him, Aiden? No. Did you roost him? Yeah. You didn't slow down to let him catch up to roost him, did you? No. No? Okay, good. No, he didn't do that. Very funny. You're afraid to catch it. Right. With your right hand? I'm crippled. You can catch it with your right hand. Okay, fine. Oh, no. It's still okay. It's just broke. We'll blame Luke for that one. It was a horrible throw. Come on, man. Lillian, uh, why don't you say something like, bad news is Isla got hurt, but good news is uh, you uh, were riding her bike. Bad news is Isla sadly got hurt, 
Good news is. Separator shoulder. Good news is. Bad for Good news is I get to ride the 250. <laughs> so I get to practice on a four stroke. How are you liking it? I'm still trying to get used to it. I don't fully trust the bike yet. Like I trusted my 125 and I wasn't scared to like mess up or crash. But that it's the, it's the end and break. I'm really used to the roll speed on the 125. Hit going into a corner, barely breaking third gear, cruising into the rut no engine brake or I kind of let off on the top to jump sometimes on my bike too and you can't do that on the 250 because it loses power and endos and I did that so I'm I feel like a big baby I'm scared to jump it a bit and then um, but I've been working on corners because I'm scared of the jumps and other stuff and I'm out in the fast practice so I've been working on corners and I actually feel really good in the corners I really like the power on that and the ruts like I could just give it gas and it goes and I struggle with the 125 a lot with it just not going. So I feel I actually really like that in the corners and I think once I ride a 250 for like a month or two I'll be really comfortable on it. I think I'll get a bit better. And I have to remind myself on it not to fry the clutch. We could get like a warning sign on your handlebars. Yeah. Do not fry clutch. I'm, I'm trying not to hit hard on it because you can roll the gas on in a rut. So I'm trying to be smooth and then not hit the clutch and the throttle too hard and then it's not smooth because that's what I do on the 125 a lot. But I feel way better on that bike. And the suspension on that bike is so nice. It's just the brake bumps just so soft and not rigid. On my other bike, everything felt choppy and rigid and it was kind of sketchy. But I actually really like that bike. It's so got AK on it. So you're saying that you like it? W, yeah, Seth. So when you're when you're in the air, you have to give it a little bit of gas so it doesn't die. No, no, it won't die. But going up a jump, if you let off the throttle like at the last second, it's gonna hit the the engine brake's gonna uh, happen. And then you're gonna go like that. No, it doesn't uh, die. No, it saying. won't die in the air. No, no. It's, I don't know. It's a it's a dramatic shift once you're off when you let off the gas. Mm -hmm. It, it is, and it's hard to get used to. And I'm trying to be smooth. And it, that bike is so hard to ride in the pits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so funny. Alright, cool. I'm just still a little scared. Like I said, I trusted my 125 with my wife. I don't trust that bike with my wife. So I'm not 100% confident. Sometimes it's it's good to be scared a little bit because when you're scared, you're more careful. Yeah, I am really like focusing on squeezing the bike and I feel like I've been using my abs and like pushing on the out really weighting the outside peg in the corners it's also really heavy and the weight where the weight is is different i'm really trying to squeeze the bike because i do not want to get kicked on that thing and then wad because that is gonna hurt one thing i've learned from my for you page on instagram you don't want a whiskey throttle uh 250. Who is it? Who's your favorite? That's right, I'm your favorite. I am, I am your favorite. I'm the favorite. <laughs> hey! Isla! Yeah? Will you do me a favor and give us a tour of the of your semi-truck? Sure. What's this room called? It's called the lounge. We have really deep aftermoto talks in here. Aftermoto talks? Yeah. Okay, let's pretend like we're having a moto talk. Alright. I'll be your dad, you be you. Okay. What were you doing? I don't what know. What was going on out there? We drove all the way to Tennessee. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> uh, here, you want to give a tour? Yeah, this is the lounge, and then up here is where the bikes go. Oh, over the that's the water the tank. Semi. It's a little bit messy. So this is like where our, the lockers are, and all your gear goes and stuff. You come all the way down here. We have two uh, racks, and then a counter, fridge. You could hide like kids in here. Yeah, I guess you could. This is. That's my brother's room. <laughs> That's your brother's room. Sparks, <laughs> live jackets. Yeah. Wit, wit. Cotton candy machine. Yeah, we have a cotton candy machine. I bet most race semi trucks don't have that. Can I mention that people, that what you guys are doing or no? Yeah. Yeah? So if you guys, if you need a ride in a semi truck, wait, Isla, wait, wait, wait. If they need a ride to Loretta's, Minio's, Nationals, Prom, whatever, they call you or, or yeah. message you and you give people rides, like their bikes. They don't like going here, they right? They drive, yeah. They, they drive, drive and like then you hours. show up with the bikes and the tools and everything. Yep. That's a really good deal. If you guys, if you got a kid going to a national race, reach out to Isla and they will get your bike and tools here for you. Yeah, if you guys have ever done a national race, uh, you know that one of the biggest expenses is travel and just gas money, getting your truck and your trailer, all your bikes across the country to uh, the race. It's thousands of dollars. So basically what Josh and Isla are doing is I carpooling, I guess you'd say. Josh bought this semi truck just to take his daughter Isla across the country to hit all the major races in 2025 and beyond. They've got extra room. It's gonna be Isla, her cousin Luke Witt. Hopefully you're gonna see us. You're gonna see us at some, some big nationals next year, as well as they've got room for some other riders too. Hey, I, I don't know exactly how many bikes they could fit, but they're already going to the races. They're already gonna be driving the semi so they might as well take your bike for you too. So all you gotta do is fly. You fly there, your bike's there, all the tools that you could ever need are there. Good environment, good team. Save some money, save some cash, save some stress. I don't know exactly what the what the pricing is. You could, you could message Josh and find out. I don't know if they're gonna charge per race or, or per year, but either way you're gonna save money and, and you're gonna be pitted with some pretty cool people. If you are going to national races, especially if you're on a budget, that is a really good option. Just tell them Brandon sent you. No! Okay, I think we need to rename your dog Blackface. Why? He's got a black face. Yeah, but there's better. <laughs> <laughs> like Go away from uh, What do you guys think? Comment below, should we name this dog Bear or Blackface? Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, and peace out.